I'm Julie Slomsky, Democratic nominee here running for State Senate, District 49, lifelong resident uh, of Erie County, and just so excited to have this opportunity and use my experience and being a, a true you know, public servant to really put it to, to work, to really stand up for the 49th District and fight for us. Yeah, and you've been in the 49th District uh, your whole life, I believe? I have, I have, yes. Uh, born and raised on the east side of Erie and, and moved to Mill Creek of where I reside now. So what has your experience here in Erie been like? It's, it's been, you know, really just a, just a great experience from my early days of working at the now uh, UPMC ballpark and working at a concession stand there and working for a couple different small businesses to having the opportunity uh, to work with Representative Bizarro and then, of course, then working with Governor Wolf um, in the last five years. Stepped down from that position and currently working at Logistics Plus of where I spent eight years as well. So honored to just have an opportunity to work with, you know, some pillars of the community to help us really work together. So you uh, are no stranger to politics, uh, to say. So I guess why now? Why uh, take this new journey? The, the opportunity and the timing was right. I, I feel we're being underserved uh, in the current position, and I want to use my seven years' experience in state government. We talk about education and how important it is, and it's like an advanced degree. You know, I have that seven years. I have the relationships on both sides of the aisle, um, you know, both chambers, with the administration. I want to use that to make sure we're getting our fair share and really help Erie County as a whole in the 49th District. Let's dive a little deeper. So uh, if you can, just three or four bullet points of what you think are the most uh, underdeserved things within uh, the 49th District. You know, raising that minimum wage. I just was talking to a gentleman just the other day uh, on a street corner. And he, he said, I'm working three jobs, doing my best to help my children still you know, receive their quality education because they're you know, learning from home now. How do we do this? How do, how do we increase that wage? You know, how is it done? And, and you, you, it just breaks my heart to hear that people are still suffering. And, and, we, and we should be raising that wage. And we should not just be talking about it. We should be doing it. Health care. We need to protect health care, especially pre-existing conditions. We, we don't know if COVID is going to be a pre-existing condition. And, and I think of just you know, the, the rough road ahead if it is. And we don't need to push people off insurance because of pre-existing conditions. As I mentioned with education, education is the foundation of opportunity from our early learners uh, to you know, our apprenticeship programs that we have as well, making sure we're getting, again, our fair share. I feel like I have a broken record talking about it, but working together with the delegation as a whole, being that, that voice. You know, people say, you go up against Philly, you go up against Pittsburgh. Y you do, it's, it's true, but we need to be stronger as a state delegation and truly be able to fight for the region. And then uh, obviously you're going to, you're, uh going against Senator Dan Laughlin currently. So uh, right now, just watching the ads or commercials have uh, particularly been negative on both sides. So I guess dive a little deeper. Why Why do you think those are so negative uh, in today's atmosphere? I, I, I wish there wasn't, you know, negativity because there, there, doesn't, there doesn't need to be. And, you know, my thing is I was raised by, you know, two wonderful parents and grandparents that taught me if you see a bully, you stand up to a bully. And I, I owe it to my supporters, my friends, my family, to stand up to a bully, especially when someone is saying such hard things about me that, that aren't true. So I'm standing up for myself, and it's something I would never tell someone not to do. So I want to make sure that we have all the facts out there. What is the truth? And, and that's the most important thing to me, because the voters deserve that. And, and that's what I hear people say that to me every day, say, good for you for standing up for yourself. Because you know what? Bullies aren't tolerated at any age. And, and it's just you know frustrating that we have such an environment. And then obviously, uh, women in politics, not uh, the, the most popular, but now we have uh, Kamala Harris as well as Christika Nevis. So what's it like to be a woman in her 40s seeing all of these other women come together, uh, kind of refacing uh, politics. Right it's now. exciting. It really is. It's exciting. It's energizing. And, and we have such great, strong groups out there, such as Emily's List and Emerge Pennsylvania, that are there to help us along the way. And, and, and it's just, it's just uh, you hear the, even these young girls reach out and say, tell me what it's like. How is it? So there's hope for us. I'm like, absolutely, there's hope for us. You know, it's, it's, it's time for make sure a woman does have a seat at the table. And I, I hear from even those, you know, such as the county executive and former Mayor Joey Savacchio, with their words of wisdom and helping us out. And it's really been exciting and truly energizing. And then uh, I do want to circle back around to the Presque Isle. Uh, of course, Senator Ann Laughlin has a lot of ads saying that Julie Slomsky shall charge for Presque Isle. Let's break that down. From my understanding, uh, that, that's not your case. No, I mean, it was a lightning round question in, in a debate, um, you know, as we all see the commercials out there over and over. And, um, you know, yeah, sure, there, there could be a fee at Presque Isle. Uh, the reason I say that, not for Pennsylvanians, not for Erie County residents, I want to preserve and protect our treasure. <laughs> 
We deserve a senator that will always be straight with us. And we're $5 billion in the hole. The last you know, agency to get funded are the state parks. And I want to preserve that treasure for generations to come. I think of so many people in, in, you know, of all ages saying, Presque Isle's different from when I was growing up. And we need to save it. So could we possibly charge a fee to out-of-state you know, visitors? Possibly. Could we have something? People are saying, what about we all put in a few bucks and have one of those barrels there as you ride by and, and drop it in? I don't know what the answer is, but I know I don't want to charge Erie County residents. I just want to preserve and protect our treasure. I mean, I want to get to Harrisburg and fight for those dollars, but I want to be honest and realistic that, again, we have so many other agencies from education to economic development to health that they are taking the precedence, obviously, but find a way to help protect our treasure. It's our gem, and it hasn't been protected and we need to do so. We owe that to the park and to future generations. And then uh, just sticking with the commercials, uh, I feel like that's gonna that, that's definitely a, a big topic right now between the two of you. So let's talk about the one uh, you call him Dirty Dan or something to that caliber. So what what is dirty about Dan? Uh, what does that commercial mean? What are you saying right there? Uh, uh, there's no place for dirty politics, especially during a pandemic. I mean, we need to, as I've been saying all along, work together, move forward, find a way to do so. And, and playing, you know, <laughs> dirty games and focus on the political side, it shouldn't be. We need to be true public servants. And this is where a public servant is different from a politician. A public servant wants to find ways to help the community move forward. Not just talk about that, but do that and not play dirty politics. There's no time for that. This is a, a we situation. We, as the 49th district, we, as a state theory delegation, want to move forward. This is not me, 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 me. This is all about we. And that's what I want to focus on. And then taking a look, uh, of course, Senator Laughlin has said uh, that he doesn't accept the lavish treats or gifts from the state, et cetera, but you possibly have. What, what does that mean? What have you accepted that he hasn't, or are you clueless to that one? I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of confused because I've worked for the most ethical governor in the, com in the history of the Commonwealth. And, and this administration, as I'm sure most are aware of, and people kind of used to tease me because we had a gift ban, and we could not accept a gift, even a bottle of water or a bagel. Uh, meeting, I would say, no, 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 and everybody would tease me uh, about it. Or if we did have a lunch or something, we would have to pay and be reimbursed for that. Um, I did have a state car when I worked for the governor. Um, that was, you know, what we had. I had 15 counties across the Northwest that I covered. And there was times that I was in a, uh, you know, stuck in the middle of nowhere, no cell phone service, snuck in a snowbank, you know. Uh, and so I did have a state car. So I'm not really sure. I mean, uh, talk about my pension. I wish I had a pension. I don't. <laughs> so, so those are things that just, I don't, I don't know if, if you, that, that, that's dirty politics. That's not factual. And again, you know, especially as a woman, you know, in, in, in you know, good government, that's what I want to focus on. I, I just, I, there's no time for dirty politics. We need to build each other up. That's what we need to be doing. But I need to defend myself, and, and that's what really gets to me. And I, I would never want to tell any young lady, you know, of any age, say, oh, no, 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 don't stand up for yourself. Stand up to bullies. We have to. And then what about, um, let, let's just hit it, uh, I guess, right on the head right now. Do you think uh, Senator Laughlin deserves a second term? I don't. That's why I'm running. We need a true public servant that's going to listen to us and fight for us every step of the way. Not just give us sound bites, put in the work and do it. Let's talk about that minimum wage. Do it. Make sure you're, you're doing everything possible. We talk about workers' protections. I mean, pair up with Representative Harkins and work, make, work to make sure his bill does move forward, the Jake Schwab worker safety bill. Not just talk about it. We've had a lot of lip service and we need action to really help us what matters most to us. That's what I care about. Based off of uh, Laughlin's voting record, what are you going to change or do better than uh, he's done during his term? Make sure I'm always standing up for public education. I I'm not going to send you know, $30 million you know, on the school choice route. Make sure I'm always doing that, not just talking again about one headline, focusing on that. I'm not going to hurt school districts like Mill Creek and Harbor Creek and Fairview. I'm going to stand up for the entire 49th district because that's what we deserve. And then uh, I guess what else, what, what's something you want everyone in the community to know right now? For me, is, is I, I just want that chance to, to prove that I am that public servant. And, and I understand, you know, how I can really you know, help us out because of all these wonderful people I've talked to since this journey started in January. 
I've had such great conversations on the phone, socially distant, you know, at, even I'm at the grocery store or I'm driving down the street. I've had people, you know, stop me and, you know, wave and, and have the conversation there and say, Julie, we need the increase in minimum wage. Julie, I'm afraid about my health care. What's going on there? Julie, I was just evicted. What do I do now? I mean, just so many people that have reached out and said, I can tell you really care about us and I really want someone like you that cares. I can see it in your eyes and I, I love hearing that and I, I just, I love just these stories of folks that maybe I haven't seen in a while or folks that you know I haven't even just met along this trail that have been with us and, and just their faith in me is what really motivates me and, and just wants me just to keep you know charging forward and that's what I plan on doing is standing up for the 49th district making sure we're not forgotten.